China's latest move marks a decisive step in its quest for technological independence. Just days after Xi Jinping's meeting with Donald Trump in South Korea, Beijing ordered all state-funded data centers to stop using or purchasing foreign artificial intelligence chips. The decision effectively severs one of China's last remaining dependencies on U.S. semiconductors for its AI sector. And it also signals a growing confidence that uh, Beijing's domestic industry can now stand on its own. Reducing reliance on an adversary effectively, uh, using Washington's terminology here, goes both ways, and uh, China just proved it. What's interesting is that when it comes to the U.S. dependence on China's rare earth processing dominance, the solution won't be as easy. It will take years, if not a full decade, for Washington to address it. But with the switch of a button, China stopped purchasing U.S. chips as those imports no longer align with its national security framework. All new state-funded data centers must now use Chinese processors such as Huawei. Existing data centers that are fully built and operational at this point that use U.S. chips will now face audits and uh, gradual phase-outs. All of this is part of a longer-term plan to build domestic AI hardware, to secure chip manufacturing, and also to reduce U.S. leverage in the global tech sector. The ban doesn't just hit NVIDIA and AMD revenue. After this move, billions will flow to Huawei, to Alibaba, and other Chinese tech firms. At the moment, uh, we are 100% out of China. And so China is 0% of, we went from 95% market share to 0%. Hmm. And so I can't imagine any policymaker thinking that that's a good idea. Hmm. That whatever policy we implemented uh, caused, one of, caused America to lose one of the largest markets in the world to 0%. But anyhow, in all of our forecasts, if there are any shareholders out there, all of our forecasts, we're, we're assuming zero, 0 for China. If anything happens in China, which I hope it will, it'll be a bonus. But it's a large market. Uh, China is the second largest computer market in the world. Uh, it is a vibrant ecosystem. I think it's a mistake for the United States to not participate. China's leadership appears to move from dependence to insulation here, which of course entails building a self-sustaining AI ecosystem that is free from American influence. And of course, the United States is doing exactly the same thing. If Beijing is a threat to the United States, as Washington loves to claim, it's only natural that China views dependence on Washington as simply undesirable. And of course, it really does go both ways, as I just mentioned. Now, with this ban, Beijing appears ready to declare that uh, mission within reach. The new regulation targets data centers funded by the state that are still under construction, 30% or less complete, prohibiting them from buying or installing foreign chips. Facilities already in operation may be granted exemptions at this time, but uh, the message appears to be quite clear. China's future AI infrastructure must be built on Chinese technology. NVIDIA once uh, powered China's technology, and uh, that's not the case anymore. A lot has changed over a short period of time. The approach to boosting self-reliance is prevalent not only in China, but also in Russia. The most recent nuclear delivery systems that were revealed by Russia, Poseidon, and Borovesnik fully rely on Russian-produced parts. So we see how important it is for states to now produce uh, essential components. If you stay up to date with the US-China trade negotiations and economic tensions and the trade war, you may notice that China's push to reduce reliance on American chips is part of a broader strategy that uh, is called algorithmic sovereignty in Beijing. This is a vision of total control over the nation's computing infrastructure by 2027. It follows a series of steps. Last September, the Cyberspace Administration of China ordered major tech companies to stop purchasing NVIDIA processors, citing security concerns. Around the same time, Premier Li Qian publicly praised the performance of domestic chips on state television, and he likely wanted to underscore the government's confidence that uh, homegrown alternatives are ready to compete. 
heat. China's ambitions didn't start with U.S. export controls, by the way. They go back over a decade. Since 2014, Beijing has poured tens of billions of dollars into building a domestic semiconductor industry that covers both legacy chips for consumer electronics and advanced logic chips for AI and military use. This long-term investment forms a critical part of China's dual goals, which are transforming its economy into a high-tech manufacturing powerhouse and uh, being in a position to compete from the security perspective. A recent report from the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology found that uh, Chinese AI models have improved dramatically in the past year alone. That suggests that even without American hardware, China's software and uh, training techniques are improving very, very quickly. Beijing's latest policy reflects an increased level of confidence. It uh, effectively demonstrates that uh, from the point of view of Chinese government, relying on U.S technology could expose critical sectors to future disruptions. China's leaders no longer want to be held hostage effectively to Washington's export bans, uh, flip-flopping, even if that means temporary setbacks or inefficiencies in the short term. The decision also fits a broader political narrative here, projecting technological self-reliance at home while also signaling uh, to the world that China is ready to define its own digital future future. For Washington, the message should be equally clear. The United States can no longer assume that Washington will remain the leader in the industry and that China's chip sector will lag. Beijing's recent moves underscore how central technological sovereignty has become to its national strategy. In response, the United States might be compelled uh, to increase export controls even further to gain some type of a control, which uh, likely means more trade tensions in the short term. Beijing no longer sees dependency on Washington as acceptable, and its domestic industry will now form the foundation of its digital power. It remains to be seen how this competition process progresses, but it's definitely clear that uh, the global AI race has entered a new, more defined phase, one where self-reliance, not interdependence, is the measure of power. Thank you so much for watching. Please join me on Substack and Patreon for more content and uh, support my work. I appreciate every single one of you who has become a paid subscriber on Substack, Patreon, and on YouTube. Thank you so much for your support. I will see you back here tomorrow. Take care.